Now, at a glittering ceremony next Thursday, somewhere in this galaxy, well, at Foyle's Bookshop on the Charing Cross Road in London anyway, uh, the winner of the Arthur C. Clarke Award for Science Fiction will be awarded, and a local writer is on the shortlist for her latest novel, After Atlas. And, uh, and here it is, uh, the Washington Post, no less, called it a vivid, riveting read. Uh, Emma Newman joins me along with multi-award winning science fiction storyteller uh, and critic uh, Cheryl Morgan. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and good luck for next week. This is, this is a, a heck of an accolade, isn't it, to get nominated for something like this? Yes, just getting on the shortlist is absolutely thrilling and I must admit I, I couldn't believe it when it was announced. <laughs> <laughs> I had to keep reading it thinking, is this really happening to me? Put this, this in life? context for us, the, the Arthur C. Clarke, I mean everybody knows and, 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 and you know, knows all about it, or certainly heard of Arthur C. Clarke, but this is, in this country you can't get much better than that, can you, to, than to win that award in science fiction? It's, it's certainly, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the most prestigious mm. science fiction award and uh, basically the, uh, the publishers of science fiction send what they consider to be their, their best books to the panel of judges and they're all read and then six are selected for the shortlist. Yes. And uh, to get onto the shortlist, as I said, it is uh, something in and of itself is thrilling. So to uh, to ask you to summarise, you know, a book of some you know, 400 pages you know, on <laughs> science fiction and all the things that are running through it in about 35 seconds is impossible. But it is, uh, it is about life itself. It's about the corporations, isn't it? And it's about a religious cult. Give, give us an idea of, of the story. Well, at its heart, it's a murder mystery. Mm. And it's just set 80 years in the future. And the detective who's sent to investigate the death of a cult leader, Carlos Moreno, is actually an indentured slave to a corporation. So it's looking at, you have the, the kind of the hard-boiled detective, but with a completely different twist, that he has no control over his life. He's effectively yes. owned. And so it's examining personal autonomy in a future where you have chips, yes. neural chips embedded in yeah. your brain, watching everything you do and everything you say. And closer to real life than we would like to imagine, I suppose, is it? Yeah. Yes, well, I see That's science. the thing about the, your yes, craft, isn't yes, it? Yes, yeah. science fiction is, I feel, one of the most exciting genres because it's the lens through which we can examine the world we live in today. Yeah, yeah. I wrote that the starting point of the world was imagining what it would be like if the TTIP went through. And <laughs> corporations and governments, I thought, well, in a few years' time, corporations and governments could merge. If yeah. you have corporations able to sue governments yeah. for the right to access water and really invading our fundamental human rights, mm -hmm. Where is the line between the two? Yes. And examining that is exactly what I did in After so Atlas. So it's a massive global corporations just running everything? Uh, yes, yeah, it? they're still divided yeah. into geographical areas, mm. but divided along different lines than they yeah. are today. Cheryl, uh, this is, we've met before, and, and you brought your, your, your huge Hugo into the studio. With it? Actually, this isn't the, the most huge of Hugos, is it? Uh, no, it they, I mean, the, the rocket there is, is identical every year, yeah. but the base is designed yeah. by the host convention wherever in the world right. the World Science Fiction Convention is no. being. Now no. explain, because this isn't the Arthur C. Clarke, this, no. this is the world one, is it? This, and this, they're called yes. the Hugos after one. Uh, Hugo Gernsback. That is correct, yeah. yes. Hugo um, Gernsback, who's a, an American editor who yeah. is, is uh, one of the fathers of science fiction. He started science fiction magazines yeah. in the States back in the early 20th century, yeah. so that's, that's why it's called And you've Hugo. won one or two of these in your time? I, I've won you? four, yes. <laughs> You, you, and your light is under the bushel in some ways. I mean, you, oh. for goodness sake, you've won four world sort of titles in science fiction writing. Yeah, but the, 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 the Arthur C. Clarke Award is just for a novel. Yeah. So it, it's really, it, it's the top end of the thing. The Hugos, like the Oscars, you, you get them for all sorts of things. So you can get an Oscar for, for winning the best actor or for the best movie, yeah. but you can also get an Oscar for doing the best makeup. And, and I've kind of got a Hugo for doing the best makeup. Yeah. Well, look, uh, uh, the other thing that we want to mention is this podcast that you've got, Tea in Jeopardy, which, which is a science fiction podcast. Well, it's, it? it's less science fiction. It, it's within the science fiction and fantasy community. We, we interview yeah. a different person every week, mm. and um, it's framed with a very whimsical device that is in a tea there. And uh, so we interview people, and the butler keeps trying to kill them. And, uh, <laughs> the, um, oh, good. <laughs> the tea My sort of tea party. <laughs> Yes, it's, um, it's very whimsical. There are lots yeah. of um, podcasts about yes. science fiction and fantasy that were very serious. Yeah. And we thought, well, there are enough of those. Let's bring something a bit, a bit lighter in. And mm. um, this is the third year it's up for a Hugo. It, it, yeah, and that's the tie-in, basically. You're, you, you're looking to that. But you're also going to be sharing a stage with one George R.R. R. Martin, who, who wrote 
Game of Thrones, isn't yes, that right? Yes, yes. And the story gets even better than that. <laughs> even it, better. It does for If me. you're a sci-fi <laughs> aficionado, you listen to this. Uh, so in uh, Helsinki is the next Worldcon, and at yeah. Worldcon, George will be on stage, and we'll be taking tea together, and the butler will be trying to kill him. Um, <laughs> which obviously, you know, he knows mild this. peril. <laughs> yes, yes, we, we warned him in advance. Um, uh, but uh, one of the things that uh, I'm most excited about meeting George is that it'll be the first time I'll see him see, in we're, person. We're the first name terms already, George. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. But science fiction community is like it's that. We are friendly. very much. It's yeah. very friendly. No, I, so what, one of the most George. important things will yeah. be what, Emma? You, um, I, I cut you off mid flow. No, I'm, I'm on first term <laughs> basis because um, I'm now a wild cards author. Yeah. I'm part of the consortium, as we call it. Um, yeah. It's been running for 30 mm. years, mm. Um, novels all in a shared universe. Um, a, I think there are 23 books. So he's got this team of about 30 writers, basically, yeah, that he oversees. Writers. and uh, Yes, it's and a superheroes and you're universe. Not one and um, yes, I've yeah. recently joined it. There's a UK yeah. trilogy yeah. that is coming out, and I'm yeah. one of the UK authors. Yeah. Fantastic. And in Helsinki, are the humans? They, they go around the world, do they? They do, uh, yes. The, 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 the Worldcon is in a different yeah. country every year. So that one yeah. was, was in Australia, yes. um, but obviously it gets to North America. Yeah. It was in London mm. in 2014. It will probably be in Dublin in two years' yes. time. So that's really close for Bristol people. They could cross Absolutely. the Absolutely, and have a great weekend in Dublin as well. Yeah. You could be in a better city. What, 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 go on, tell us about After Atlas as a critic, with your critic's hat on there. The, the yeah. thing that I love about After Atlas is that it really engages with yeah. the, the issues that we've got in the world. Now, you were making yeah. that joke earlier on about the lady, the, the old lady who got her uh, yeah. uh, degree from the university and, and talking about There's student loans. Span, well, yeah. the, the way that poor Carlos yeah. gets he, to be an indentured yeah. servant is, is that he's always short of money and he has to borrow money yes. from the company. You know, yeah. 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 So it's, it's, it's just taking yeah. the, the whole zero hours and, mm. and privacy on the internet just to the next level. And it all, it all ties in. And with the very, very best of luck Thank with the you. whole thing, we really look forward to it. That's next weekend, so it we'll is. keep an eye out and we will yes, get back Thursday. in touch with you and see how things go. <laughs> Folks, thank you both very much indeed for coming in.